our next our next speaker is Dr. Uh, Paolo Dulles, who graduated from the uh, graduated in veterinary medicine from the University of Buenos Aires, uh, where he subsequently and subsequently undertook an internship in equine surgery in the University of Parma. He spent ten years in practice before jo becoming general manager of Unirolab, uh, a forensic laboratory services for the equine uh, the Italian equine industry. Uh, he's the Italian delegate to the European Horse Racing Scientific Liaison Committee and he's going to speak to us this morning about a study of non-steroidals detected in pre-purchase samples. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. I will speak a little bit about those uh, particular uh, part of our job as a lab. It's a small uh, proportion of our analysis, the analysis dedicated to pre-purchase exams. Well, uh, NSAD, uh, we have seen in those days that they can improve uh, in a significant way uh, the science, the clinical science of lameness. I will not lose more time on that, but this is uh, scientifically demonstrated with gait analysis using force plates. Uh, nowadays, uh, pre-purchase drug screening is widely diffused and equine practitioners generally uh, are very... Um, uh, propose a, a lot of, uh, of those analyses, even for very low price horses. Uh, it's uh, astonishing, but uh, uh, one imagine that you make a purple chase screening test for uh, over 100,000 euro or something like that, but we still do a lot of those exams, even for uh, horses that cost uh, 20,000 euros or less. So uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the owners are very uh, propensed to, to spend more money just to have this information. Pre-purchase uh, screening exam is much more diffused in uh, uh, equestrian sports uh, than in race horses. That's maybe due to the age, to the career duration, maybe the subtlety, the, 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 the lighter symptoms that uh, uh, show jumper shows if compared with uh, racers. Depending on the country and the prediction uh, involved in the pre-purchase exam, this control is performed in two different ways. Historically, uh, there was uh, the forensic custody of the samples taken during the uh, pre-purchase exam, uh, just for uh, a retro uh, pro uh, retrospective study if any problem arises during the, the transaction of the horse. But nowadays, this kind of... Uh, of uh, of choices is, uh, is, uh, is left and uh, the, uh, what, what practitioners choose is the direct screening of the sample so that the conclusion of the sale is subject to laboratory report. The pathological conditions that are usually masked by medication in equestrian horses uh, are the condition uh, of uh, orthopedic disorders and normally uh, NSAIDs are used for that respiratory diseases with uh, widespread use of corticosteroids and bronchodilators, and uh, sometimes behavioral problems with the use of tranquilizers. Uh, it's very important to understand that the pre-purchase uh, analysis is very different from a regulatory analysis. It's two uh, really different things. These analysis must be quick, uh, normally uh, four working days, W meanwhile, uh, uh, regulatory analysis can have a duration of up to a month. Pre-purchase exam is uh, affected on blood, and uh, this is another important issue. Uh, everybody knows that um, screening is much, is much more easy in urine, and you can find a, a lot of things more, but nowadays uh, blood is... Uh, is getting a, a more and more uh, suitable uh, biological matrix for making analysis. We will see later that in it's uh, new of the last five years, no more than that. And we are uh, getting more and more uh, findings with the blood. The, uh, the technique of the analysis must be reliable, so those analyses must be performed by specialized labs it's not a matter of doing those analyses with commercial ELISA kits, but you, you need really very reliable spectrometry uh, methods in order to give, uh, to, to give uh, right results. The pre-purchase exam must be fair with the buyer and the seller. 
Uh, there is a thing that uh, I've uh, heard yesterday and uh, in part today also. Zero tolerance doesn't exist anymore. I don't know one lab in Europe applying zero tolerance. It, it, it really is history. So uh, for the uh, drugs with therapeutic use, we uh, use normally uh, all the prescription of EHSLC so that the international screening limits. Normally, uh, as I told you, uh, a purchase exam doesn't cover all the substances as in regulatory analysis. And uh, for, uh, for every lab nearly in Europe, propose a purchase panel intended to cover just some class of drugs. So a standard purchase panel normally carries NSAID screening, corticosteroids, bronchodilators, and tranquilizers. If the, uh, those pre-purchase analyses are devoted to yearlings at the sales, uh, normally you can also add anabolic steroids. Uh, as I told you, laboratories are reluctant to analyze commercial analysis in the same way of regulatory samples. And this is a, a, a security issue. Uh, we are not very happy in uh, giving a, a real uh, test of the overall laboratory detection performance to everybody. This is a form that uh, our customers take from our website. Uh, they choose, well, we, we accept those requests only by practitioners. They choose the drugs that they want to be screened. Uh, we have a special regulation in Italy, so we are not allowed to do that in racehorses. So they have to declare that the horses intended, that the sample is not coming from a racehorse. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Now, our experience in the two years from 2008 and 2009, uh, in an overall number of 26,000 uh, analyses, we have done 500 pre-purchase uh, tests. In those tests, we found 18 positive cases. It's a, a very low uh, percentage because it's the 0 0.036 of positive analysis, and it's 15 times lower than our regulatory analysis. And this is quite logical, because normally if you sell a horse, you, you sell it in, in an appropriate way. Uh, between the, those 18 cases, only 12, uh, well, 12 were uh, cases of NSAID findings. That makes the 66% uh, the of our positive in, in our pre-purchase exams. Uh, between the, uh, uh, the non-steroidal uh, that we found in our analysis, you have a list in which you have, for sure, the, the most diffused, uh, flunixin, phenylbutazone, but also some drugs which are not uh, registered for the use in horse in Italy, like, for instance, the nimesulide. Uh, as I told you, but it's really important, does, uh, those are not trace analysis. Those are analysis that take in consideration uh, the ESL. So uh, cases in which the drug found in that moment had some, some uh, effectiveness. Okay, uh, between the, the, the non-steroid that we found, some are uh, approved for, uh, for the horse in Italy, but some are not. Now, uh, some consideration uh, for, 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 for us. The NSAID findings in pre-purchase are more frequent than every, every other drug. That's clearly uh, due to the fact of the, the orthopedic condition that are uh, nearly uh, a working problem of the horse, as every, everybody knows. And uh, uh, the, those conditions can uh, uh, lower and even destroy the economic value of a horse. And there is another consideration that resource economic sustainability relies mostly in potential winnings, whilst in equestrian sport, horse commerce holds the primary role. I mean, the horse commerce has a role per se, not depending on the expectation of the winnings. So horse value is not strictly correlated to price money. Labs are more and more uh, efficient in blood analysis. And this is, uh, as I told you, a relatively recent upgrading in the last five years. So in the near future, 
we have to take in consideration an increasing number of positive cases also in purple chest tests. Well, now we are speaking about potential new regulations. So, if a horse is going to be presented to uh, a competition, uh, it will be presented fit to compete. So we have to expect that the same condition, fit to compete, will be found in a purchase exam. And that is really something to focus on. Uh, I don't know if any practitioner inside of this room is uh, happy to visit a horse under phenobutazone for one, uh, over one million euro decision. It, it's something that we have to, to think on. Mostly because uh, normally, or sometimes, you can have a prepper jazz exam at the end of a competition or while training for a competition. So the two uh, events are not very separated by time. Some other considerations. If a horse doesn't pass the vet check because the practitioner has based his judgment on the finding of an, of an NSAD who was below the concentration admitted by competition rules. Are we, are we fair with the seller? But even worse, an, an NSAD is found, but it's not considered positive according to the competition rules. And subsequently, the horse gets lame. What will be the reputation of the lab and the practitioner? And of course, is there some liability for them? So in conclusion, it's a matter of equilibrium. Medication control is an equilibrium exercise and that be, can be deployed just in presence of a clear framework. And this framework is done by interlaboratory harmonization and simple and clear rules. Thank you.